like every time you see me, I'm eating chicken and potatoes, bitch. Hey, Team Beyond the Week, I'm about to start a new segment I like to call Ask Brian. And basically all it is is I'm going to look through the comments from this week. I'll look at the funniest or the best ones, the ones that I want to address. And I'm going to answer maybe four, five, six of them. And I'm just going to keep doing videos like this. So if you have any cool questions to ask, leave them in the comments below or on any video. And I'll find the best ones, put them up on screen, and you'll go find some things out. Don't you get bloated as fuck eating so much? And yes, I get super bloated as fuck when I bulk. If you guys have been following me for a long time, then you know what happens when I bulk. And when I get into the later weeks of my bulk is I really get a fat moon face. And what a moon face is, is when you're kind of holding like a ton of water and, you, and you've got your fat kind of building up. So your fat is starting to come into your jowls, but then the water is also coming into your jowls. So you just get a nice big round face with no jaw definition. Do you go to failure on all your sets? Now this is a concept that is widely debated between all fitness YouTube channels. Some people say you shouldn't go to failure on every set. You should go, you know, two or three, four reps before failure and that you're able to push longer and blah, 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 blah. But my opinion is that you should go to failure every motherfucking set. Push yourself until you cannot push the weight anymore and then get someone to help you or drop the weight and push more reps. The only way to grow, in my opinion, is to go to failure and then next time you do that same thing, do more reps. And if you're not able to do more reps or more weight, then you need to push harder. The only way for me to grow is to failure every set. Hey, Brian, what are your thoughts about physiques of greatness? Would you ever consider a collab with Chris Jones and Vince Garza? Yes. Okay, so my true honest opinion of Physiques of Greatness is the first time I saw Chris Jones in his videos, I actually was like, I really dislike this guy, which is kind of, it's kind of messed up because I had seen a video of him when he was really kind of fat in the top of his bulk. So I was like, who is this guy and why is he trying to tell people what to do? But as I watched his videos, I actually really think Chris Jones is a cool guy. I think he really has a, a good grasp on what he's doing. And I think the years of training that he's, you know, has behind him and under his belt have given him a good amount of experience. And if you go and watch his channel and you actually look at his physique, he's got the physique to show for it. You know, he does what I do is he bulks real hard. He gets nice and fat and fluffy to the point where you're like, this is just some fat guy, right? And then he shreds all that off and you're like, holy bejeebus, it's Adonis, but black. It won't happen anytime soon, but if it did, it'd be so cool to do a collab with both of those guys. But at the moment, I'm at 5,000 subscribers. I think POG is at like 250,000 subscribers. So it might just be a little bit of time before you see a collab between me and CJ. One. What's your inspiration for working now? So my inspiration, that's a two-part answer. One, Arnold Schwarzenegger has always, always been a huge, huge inspiration to me. Even before I got into bodybuilding and muscles, even even back in the day when I thought, you know, like people like Phil Heath and Kai Green were just like disgustingly big and like, oh, I was like, oh, those guys are nasty on steroids. Even then I thought Arnold was just like the sickest dude ever. So he has always been my number one motivation, which is not cliche. I swear it's not. And number two is actually pretty funny. Uh, my brother, Lanky Progress, I don't know if you guys have seen his channel, but check it out, Lanky Progress. Back when I was about 16 or 17, I was down at my dad's shop working there and he came in one day after doing some CrossFit stuff and he was like, hey man, look at this. And he's pointing at his like, I think it was like 13.5 inch arms. And he was like, I'll get a little biceps. And at that time I was so skinny. I was looking at him and I was like, damn man, you got some big ass arms now. And that single moment got me like, I gotta get bigger than my bigger brother. I can't let him get bigger than me. So I started working out and it's funny. Now I'm five and a half years into this, almost six years into this. And now he is the one who's starting bodybuilding. You know, it was him starting CrossFit, then he stopped for a while and then I started bodybuilding. And now he's doing bodybuilding with me. Two, did you ever watch wrestling? No, no I do not. Three. Who's better, Ziz or Jeff? Ziz or Ziz or Jeff? Jeff, Jeff, or oh, Ziz? What kind of fucking question is that? <laughs> Ziz, all the way, bro. You Myron? What are your thoughts about Ziz? Ziz? What do I think of Ziz? Ziz is more than a person. Ziz has transcended into an idea, a beacon of light in a world of dark, gainless, protein powder sucking pussies. Ziz was a man you could look up to 
for all your gains and inspiration. A man with serrates so big they'd make your biceps look like fucking puny Spongebob arms. Ziz was such a man he could do legs with his arms. Ziz was a cool guy who doesn't afraid of anything. And Mother Nature, that bitch, snatched a good soul from us. A soldier, a swolger in the muscle army. What is your maintenance calories? What is your maintenance calories? My maintenance starts about 3,600 calories at the beginning of my cut and ends around 3,200 calories towards the end of my cut. Hey, baby. How old are you? I'm old enough. I turned 21 on September 23rd, and since then I've drinking three times since becoming legal. I said, hey. I said, what? I said, how long does your bulk last? Now bulks are different every single time depending on your goals and your time frame for those goals. So your bulks could last anywhere from 20 weeks to 700 weeks, whatever. My last bulk was actually 50 weeks long. It was almost an entire year of bulking. At the end of that, I looked like a giant bear. But it did give me a lot of mass. I just had to suffer not looking aesthetic for about 30 weeks of that. But usually I like to keep my bulks pretty long. So at least 30 weeks usually up to about 50 or 60 weeks and then I usually go for the cut. Uh. Have you reached your natty limit yet? What? Uh, have you reached your natty limit yet? Uh, have you reached your natty limit yet? What? One more time. No, I have not reached yet. my natty limit yet. No, but seriously, I have not reached my natty limit yet. My natty limit is probably about four, maybe five years away, honestly. Now, people think, they, they throw this term around way too freaking much. A lot of people think you can even hit it in like two or three years. It takes at least a decade to get close to your natural potential. Um, currently, I'm at 250. 506 pounds at about 10 11 percent body fat and my natural potential is probably somewhere around 215 at about six percent body fat five percent something like that so it's going to take me another three to five years to even you know scrape that natural potential all right brethren and brethrenettes i hope you guys enjoyed the first installation of ask brian and if you liked the question singer that was Kurt Owen. He's my best friend. He helps me with a lot of my productions and stuff, and I help him, you know, film his music videos and all that stuff. So if you want to check out his channel, you can click the annotation right there. Click it and go listen to his music and buy his CDs. So leave the next questions that you want me to answer in the comments below. I will sift through them and see which ones are actually interesting and which are a bunch of crap. Thank you for watching the video. Lift heavy or you'll die, Myron. Team Beyond the Week. Roll the dubstep!